morning. It's about 6.30 a.m. on a Saturday, and uh, I haven't vlogged in a while, so guess what we're gonna do today? <gasps> but first, what we have to do is we gotta, we gotta clean this kitchen because, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a mess right now, so. So the reason why I haven't made a vlog in a very long time is because I've just been super busy with a lot of client work and uh, I did some batch content for my YouTube so it's been uploading for the past couple of weeks now and I want to share some of the cool stuff that I've been doing because uh, yeah it's fun. I made a weed commercial. Now we'll talk about why I made this weed commercial, uh, but I had this idea for a video that I really just wanted to try. So I was like, okay, what what should I do with this idea? And then I was like, oh, this is a perfect product that kind of fits in with uh, what I'm trying to do anyways. So we'll talk a little bit about what that means, but really the point of this video today is all about spec work. All right, we're gonna make some eggs and then some oatmeal. Oatmeal for me and uh, egg sandwich for Amanda. I kind of messed up because uh, vlogging is hard while you're cooking. And this is also very hot by my face. Hi. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna vlog okay so we took a little bit of a hiatus for a second and now we're going to talk about spec work for a little bit so what is spec work well it's basically like doing a a project that is just like hey i'm i'm cool i can do this thing so i've been doing a lot of spec work as of late because it's letting me flex my artistic muscles and also do projects for either brands or things that make me excited and fun. So right here, we have one on this brand called Cannabis. This is the Wii commercial, which I will play right now. Now, a little bit of backstory behind this. A friend of mine works with this company and he so kindly let me have some of their stuff. I actually do not partake, but used to quite a lot. And I think it's kind of cool how that industry is, has been expanding. So I took some of my own techniques and uh, did some After Effects things to sort of create that. So why did I do this? Really, it was to not only flex my artistic muscles, but also, show this company, this team of people who creates this product that, hey, maybe they might need some video work. So I can use this piece now to sort of demonstrate what things we could accomplish if we were to maybe try and create some something, some stuff together. So here's the goal behind spec work. It's a good way to practice your artistic muscles and uh, flex them and get those reps in, but also you can show specific people or clients that you might want to work with them. So I've done stuff with companies like I did that little Halo commercial. And I also did one pretty recently for a company called Cryptozoic Entertainment. And yeah, these two pieces really just demonstrate what spec work is. It's just me flexing my artistic muscles, but also I can uh, show these companies that, hey, we could create something cool and hopefully it can build into something fun where we can, I could do some work with them and have 
creative freedom with them and also just just be on the quest of creating cool stuff. So what we're doing now is we're going to finish up some finishing touches to this, get some extra work done, and then we'll finally get into training. Oh, it's bright. And we totally didn't grab an ND filter because we're going into the garage anyways. I didn't want to take off a bunch of stuff and then just put it back on. And then, yeah, that was, that was dumb. But oh my God, silver exposed. Bench, bench, bench. Bench, 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 bench. Okay, so training is uh, going we're pretty going pretty well, pretty well so far. I'm gonna stand in front of my my big fat light. Um, but I started I was doing my lateral raises, the uh, the birdie one, and um, I had this weird pop in my uh, right shoulder. It like it was like this tearing sound. Probably was the blood flow restriction band, but I'm a little nervous. I'm slightly hypochondriatic about like it being like a nerve or something or and i don't know i'm starting to feel a little dizzy so we're gonna cut training off there actually no i'm gonna do my calves first but uh yeah i know if this was only a couple minutes but training is taking a little while because those split squats are hard and i'm i'm pretty sure this is the last training session where that's going to be a thing because gyms are opening back up and we get the uh the leg presses and the squats again so i'm super excited about that let me do my calves and then we'll finally talk about what some um, some things you can do as far as your own spec work. You guys are gonna go right here. That looks pretty cool. A little bit of zoom. Okay, now we're ready. So spec work, as we said, is a good way to sort of flex your art muscles and also maybe find some new clients, but what are some things that you could make now spec work because you the nature of it you're not really getting paid for it how do you what are things that you can make so because i'm doing things that represent what i actually want to create with my own content that in that includes like little toy commercials or little product videos like those are the things i like to make so i'm going to do that and basically make what you want to be doing for money that's the simplest form. So if you're a photographer and you really want to work with, let's just say Nike as an example. Now Nike has tons of photographers. There's tons of people reaching out to them, but maybe there's other brands that are close to that. Like, I don't know, Adidas or even some like local clothing companies or fitness companies doing something with their product and then sending it to them. Just be like, Hey, look at this cool shit I made. Can we do more stuff together? I think it's cool. Feel free to use it and just gift it to them as a gift. And that's kind of what I've been doing because I'm purely coming at this from a, from a, I like what you do and I want to do stuff with that. And I want to support that message and really just come at it through an altruistic lens. Just be like, I want to create cool stuff because that's really all I want to do. I want to create some cool stuff and play around in After Effects and do all these really cool things. And I want to make a living off of that as well. So spec work is a really good way to expand your skill set and also work with cool people. So I guess if I can have you take away a couple of things with spec work, do these things. Number one, establish what you want to create. Why, why did you pick up the camera in the first place? Did you pick it up to make photos? Did you pick it up to make video content? Do you like motion graphics? Figure out what, it, what do you like to make? That's the first thing that you should establish. Number two, find a brand or influencer or company that you want to work with, whether that be like, I don't know, Bungie or Microsoft or DC Comics or I, I don't know, just find something that gets you excited and you're just like, yeah, I would love to make content for that. So that's number two. And I should have really closed the closet door on that last shot, but uh, we're just gonna do that now. Mm. Come on. Number three, 
buy the product that you want to highlight or do something with that brand for that brand or company or influencer that just makes you excited and looks cool within your style or try to adhere to their brand guidelines, but just do something with it. And then the last part, perhaps the most important part is this one. You have to share it. Well, how do you reach out to them? First, there's so many easy ways to actually reach out to people when you just want to share something. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc. Most companies or most influencers have some sort of inbox where they can receive feedback or comments or something from their fans. So what I normally do is I'll just send a cold email saying, hi, my name is John Jagsney. I'm a videographer and I love your stuff. We maybe we have some common connection, whether it be a friend or mentioning I've been following your stuff for some for some time and I really enjoy it. And then just say, I created this really cool thing because I love whatever you create so much. And I would love to see if we could potentially do something more. Check this thing out. I welcome you to use this on your social media channels. If this is something you'd you'd love to explore more, maybe we can open up a dialogue and just be like, hey, what are some cool things we can create? And from there, take it. And if they say yes, great, then you have a new friend that you can work with and maybe you can make some money off of it. Or if they say no, then you, you know, hey, that's not a reflection on you or your work. That is purely a, we don't need this right now. And most of the time when you share something with someone that is purely just altruistic, most of the time people aren't, aren't going to look a gift horse in the mouth and be like, what the, f I didn't get the thing I wanted. No, most people are pretty genuine and understand, hey, these things take time. And as long as your work, you actually put your effort into it, people will appreciate it. So share it on Instagram, send it to them in the DMs and be like, hey, I wanna give this to you. Do you wanna do more? Yes, no, maybe so. And then from there, make cool shit. Now, a good rule to follow when it comes to your spec work is don't spend a whole lot of time on it. So my general rules of thumb are this. If I'm doing it, a shooting day, I tend to leave no more than a couple of hours to get some cool shots. Let's just say with setup and all that, that's like a half day shoot. Same thing with editing. If you're going to do anything more than that, it's going to turn into a huge time sink. And I, I can say this from experience. I have done personal projects that I thought would lead to these really big things and really didn't amount to much. And that's okay because I, I realized that's not something that they needed, but I still got to flex my art muscles as well. General rule of thumb though, try and keep editing down to a day and then share it with them as fast as possible because if you hesitate, then all that's gonna happen is you're not gonna you're not gonna do it. Just make the jump, make the plunge, create something cool. And then, hey, you know what? It might lead to something and it might not, but you still have it for your portfolio. So that's it. That's spec work. Whether you're a photographer, you want to just share some cool photos with cool companies, or you're, you're a videographer and you make videos, or you do motion graphics, kind of like me, and you want to make some Instagram stories or photo posts for Instagram or a YouTube video or a highlight video. All those things could be really cool ways in which you could create cool shit for people. So that's, like I said, spec work. Okay, let's move on with the rest of our day. What's what's happening next? How was the call? Good. What do you guys talk about? Batman. Sweet. This is wildly overexposed. My yeah, bad. My bad. Okay. Bright light. <laughs> so, um, how are we going to do the salmon tonight? <sighs> I have no idea. Do Something want... with miso paste oh. and brown sugar. Okay. I wanted to ask you something. So this little vlog I'm doing is all about spec work. So yeah. at some point in the next hour or so, can you talk about your spec work that you've ever done? Mm. And like, what are your thoughts on it? Not to think about it now, but, um, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I've never, I've ever actually had to do spec work or experience it in the same way that you have. I mean, I've done commission work, um, things like that fan art how fan art can be used mm -hmm. for portfolio pieces and things like that but i think that's like the same thing though yeah so uh, i guess it just depends on how you define it cool all right i mean i'm gonna talk about her spec work 
while we have dinner. Well, first of all, I think the video is amazing. It really shows quality. As far as somebody who would potentially be receiving spec work, unfortunately, I would have to say timing is everything. There was actually a studio that reached out to me in February and I was like, wow, they're amazing, but I'm having work for you. Mm -hmm. But I hope to work with you in the future. And then it's been like six months and they actually resent me their website. Okay. And because they're like, hey, we updated our website, you know, um, check it out. Mm -hmm. Still would love to work with you. And it was like, oh, that's right. I forgot about these people. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I do <laughs> actually genuinely want to work with them. I just didn't have any work. Right. So following up, you know, if, if they, you know, end on like a good note saying like, yeah, I'd love to work with you. I just don't have any work for you now. Mm -hmm. Following up actually from my perspective isn't necessarily <laughs> bad mm -hmm. because it's honest. It's like, I don't have work for you, but I might have work now. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I still don't have work for them because right, right. <laughs> timing is just bad. But a lot of it turns out to timing mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, as far as for what you do, it, you know, you always need marketing. Mm -hmm. Like that's an ongoing need. Spec work is very, very exciting because mm -hmm. I haven't seen very much of it, but I mean, I've seen like, for example, um, collectors do reviews for free or like if they pick up our stuff and they like review our stuff for free and like kind of promote it and stuff like that, it definitely has our attention. And so it, it basically helps you see yourself in their channel or sees, see yourself in their style. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much like if that's the difference between a portfolio and like spec work is that you can see a portfolio and be like, dang, you are skilled. That's great. But I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't like, I don't know what we would do. And like the spec work that you did for Kripkins was so different than what we usually do that it wasn't bad, but it's one of those things where you're like, I could do, like when you were talking to me about potentially doing a Kripkins video and you're like, I could do a Kripkins video like this. I had, honestly had a hard time conceptualizing it and therefore I had a hard time following through with it because I was like, well, I don't know, like what to tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how to direct that actually. Mm -hmm. I actually started to run into issues trying to storyboard that or trying to like work with you. I was just like, I don't know what that would look like. Mm -hmm. But for you to take the initiative and do the spec work piece to show it, it became much less of a leap of like, I could do something like this. It's like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so it became easy to see our brand and our stuff working with, with you and style. with your style. Yeah. Um, no, I appreciate that. And I, I apologize if I put you in a rock and a hard place. Like no, that. I just mean to say that like, that's why I didn't follow up on it more. It's not mm -hmm. a lack of interest. It was a lack of vision. Mm -hmm. Just, I didn't know what to do with it, mm -hmm. but you did. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you followed through anyway, mm -hmm. because like if Crippers over to pay you, that's what they would be paying you for anyway. Right, <laughs> It's right. your vision to do it. Right, right. Um, I think that's also the, um, one of the things I've learned about like trying to get clients. Um, they, they, they'll they send you samples, but like not every artist is gonna be the right fit. And I think that's also uh, with that studio that sent you their portfolio and that work, um, a lot of the time when a client, a, a freelancer reaches out to a potential client, a lot of the time the answer is no, not because they're bad at art, it's because they just don't need that right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's a really... Definitely. Especially like right now, budget. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it's just, it's not even timing. It's like, I don't know if we could afford to hire you mm -hmm. and pay you like an honest good wage. Mm -hmm. Like we would have pocket change. Like mm -hmm. it's just, it's an us problem. Right. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. And the, 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 yeah, at the end of the day, it's just like you, you can do all these pieces for other uh, clients and yeah, it might not be necessarily lucrative if they can't afford you or you like Kripkins as an example, but now I have that piece of my portfolio. So it's like, it's a win-win. Like even if um, I don't get anything from it from mm -hmm. say Cryptozoic, right. I still have that piece that I can just be like, this is all my reel now. And I can email that to like any other toy company and be like, hey, look at this. Yeah, you know? definitely. So. I mean, 
a video I said to always ask permission first, which I agree, because you are representing the brand. So even if they didn't use it, you're using their item. So just to make sure that, you know, there's no confusion there, but yes. The other thing to say about putting it in your portfolio is a friend of ours, Kyle, he, he, one of his advice for doing portfolio reviews is he can always tell what's schoolwork and what's professional work or what's, you know, personal work. Like there's certain things where you can pick up and you can tell what, like, I know you personally didn't necessarily go to school for this. So you don't have like homework in your portfolio. People, you know, in the professional industry can kind of tell student work versus professional work. Mm -hmm. And so the faster you can do maybe spec work to weed that out, just in general advice is, mm -hmm. you know, never a bad idea. Yes. Adding to your portfolio, I... moving, keeping it fresh, moving forward mm -hmm. is invaluable. Mm -hmm. Do fan art. Do it, do it, do it, do it. For a long time, professor said to keep it out of your portfolio, but I disagree. That shows how you handle a AAA license. If you want to work for DC, draw DC. Like, that's the thing. If you want to work for video games, do video game fan art. Um, I also have four presentations gone through fan art and pitched them as um, figures with the caveat of, hey, do you want to do this figure? We should reach out to this artist and hire them. So it's like, I've taken fan art and shown it in internal presentations to say, hey, what about this person? This is what they could do. If we want to make this image into a figure, we should reach out to them and hire them. Mm. Is that a thing you want to do? Right. So that being said, fan art definitely gets seen, gets noticed and goes places. Mm -hmm. That definitely works with spec work. Mm -hmm. And it helps grow your following, your follower base. Fan art always does really well because people have like a sentimental attachment to the IPs and the licenses and the brands. Mm -hmm. So you have built-in marketing behind you. Mm -hmm. So I think also another big key there is the word fan. Like if you are a fan of the thing, you'll do a good job on it. Yeah, you'll do your best work when you're excited about it. So do stuff that you're excited about. Okay, friends, that's spec work. I hope you appreciated both my perspective and this one's perspective on the things. And I'm gonna end the vlog here. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below or go ahead and punch the crap out of like that like button. It lets me know that I'm making not garbage content because sometimes I know some of this is garbage. I appreciate you. I'm not gonna get, in the, get this time back from your life, so I hope it was worth it. And until next time, my name is Joan Jagsney and I will see you at some point. Bye. Bye, I'm gonna put you outside to time-lapse. Goodbye.